Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I, I had the opportunity to meet with our players last night after our game in Philadelphia. Um, my message to them was that the, the goal is never to just make it through the 82 games. It's to reach something beyond that. Uh, <laughs> understanding that where we're at in this whole process of two years, um, you know, and ideally this season would have given us a, a larger sample size of this group together, especially after we made the trade for Otto, but it's the NBA and we had, uh, we were faced with some, some injuries and some obstacles that uh, sometimes are hard to, to overcome. Uh, with that said, we, we're confident that we have a foundation in place with several players. We are confident in the direction that we are headed. Uh, we understand always how important offseason is where we will have a, another high draft pick. We have the opportunity to, to bring in some veteran players, which will be a priority for us uh, to, to help this roster grow. Um, and, and those things are important. The, uh, you know, we made a change in midseason with our coach. And uh, Jim Boylan, in, in our estimation, has done terrific things in terms of establishing what we want in this building and with this organization, especially on the practice floor, how to carry yourself and how to work. And I can tell you this, I, I spent uh, this morning, Jim had a, a meeting with our players, probably half an hour. Uh, it was spot on about just expectations, uh, even sitting in on some, some player end of season meetings. And I can tell you that uh, the thing that excites me about our direction with our head coach is his passion and his care level for our players in this organization. He, he wants to succeed. He wants our players to get better. He has a plan in place for all of them in order to do so this, this off season. And, and that's, uh, that's very encouraging. I, I think given a summer, given an opportunity to go into training camp next year with his own beliefs and philosophy will, will be uh, an advantage for us. So um, like I said, th this, this, uh, it's, it's never easy in this business t to lose because we're in the winning business and that's what we aspire to. Uh, I thought going into this season that uh, if, if we'd stayed healthy, we would have had uh, an opportunity to, to, to win a significant number of games from, you know, from last year, but that didn't happen. Uh, as I look on it now, it might be a blessing in disguise in terms of our draft position, those type of things. So, uh, but I, committed to our direction. We're going to be patient, but we're also going to take advantage of opportunities that come our way. So I'll take questions. John, um, what, what, what is your message to Bulls fans, not only after this year of uh, such a terrible season record-wise, but over the last couple of years? What is your message to them to, to give them some hope regarding the future moving on from 2019-2020 season and on? Well, we, we knew when we uh, – we went to, to trade Jimmy that it wasn't going to be easy. Um, I, I think this year was, was difficult from the standpoint that we had four injuries to key players that we couldn't, you can't anticipate. Lowry went down the third practice of training camp and uh, with an elbow injury that happened in a scrimmage. Denzel's out the entire year with ankle surgery. Then Wendell falls in LA, breaks his thumb, and Chandler breaks a toe. Th those are four injuries that ended up being, you know, three of them were season ending. For a team that's trying to grow and develop, that, that makes it very difficult. And as you saw, as the season went along and we got toward the end, we were, you know, we were rolling out players that, you know, that, that we didn't want to necessarily have playing games for us in, in that regard. We wanted to see our entire roster together. That, that's that's the, the thing. So um, rebuilds are difficult. Uh, sometimes it takes years and years. I, I still believe, given a, a, a really good offseason with this draft pick that we have coming and with our uh, ability to, to get some veteran players in here alongside these young guys, we, we can make a substantial leap. And I, I did tell the players, you know, and, and you've heard Zach's commented on, you know, he, he wants to be a playoff team next year. I think our goal next year has to be in the, to be in the hunt. We want to be in that hunt again. Now, that's going to take – us being healthy. That's the first and uh, the first thing in this whole thing. And, uh, you know, and hopefully we'll get a little luck in that regard. But the, the four major injuries we had this year were things we couldn't, we couldn't account for. John, w when you mentioned when you guys traded Jimmy Butler, went that direction, you know, I look back and, and you had said that you wanted to move away from mediocrity. 
towards a championship again. To do that, you're going to need superstars. Where are you going to get those superstars? I mean, I, to me, that's the biggest question is you're, you're building a team right now, but it looks like it's a team going back towards maybe being a fifth seed or a fourth seed. It, it doesn't have superstars. And where, where are those superstars going to come from? How are you guys going to get those? And, and how are you going to attract them to come here? Well, we, we first have to – the first part of that is through the draft and, and to get relevant again. Um, I'm not ruling out uh, Zach Levine or Larry Markinen being – significant players in this league. You know, Zach just turned 24, and I, I thought Zach had a really good year, uh, a really good year, and he grew in a lot of ways where I think he's going to get better. Um, Lowry's just still a, a young guy. So as, as I've mentioned many times, the internal growth of our guys is a, a, a key part of that. Um, and I do believe when we establish winning again that the city is a, a draw, this organization is a draw. And, uh, but that's, that's down the road. That's why we made the deal at the trade de deadline for Otto. Uh, we felt that was a significant piece to becoming a, a, a much better basketball team. And over that stretch where we had him and we were healthy, we were, we were playing uh, at a level that I could see us playing at in the future. So um, we're, we're, we're trying to build towards what you're talking about. Pax, it looks like you've identified four young starters right now. Chris Dunn's been here for two years. His development has been kind of uneven based on injuries and production. Why hasn't uh, Chris been able to seize the reins on that spot, and what are your plans to upgrade the position during the offseason? Well, it, it's, uh, we have not given up on Chris. Um, I think he has defensive abilities, uh, but we, we – we have to get better at that position. There's absolutely no question in my mind. Um, he has an opportunity this summer to, to improve his game, uh, come back with the mindset of being a true push guard, uh, getting us to play with pace. We, I, I do see our starting lineup with three legitimate three-point shooters and Zach Lowry and Otto. Uh, a point guard who can get those guys opportunities will be, will be a priority. So. Um, Chris, Chris is going to have opportunity because he's under contract, but we understand as an organization that uh, that's a position that if we're to make a, a, a step in the right direction, that uh, we're going to have to address. Uh, no, no, no beating around the bush on that one. John, uh, you praise Jim's um, teaching ability and his passion and his care factor. Do you have a, what are your thoughts about his some of his stylistic uh, approaches to the game? Obviously, you know with his focus on paint touches and not take as many threes. It flies a little bit in, today, in the face of today's NBA. Do you have any thoughts about that? I, there, there's, you know, I, I, I personally don't uh, buy, subscribe to the theory that you have to shoot 53s a game to, you know, to win at a high level. Um, I, Jim's thing is getting to the rim. It's not, not necessarily through uh, post Passing and that, but although that's still something that you 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 know, if you have players that can catch the ball close to the basket and score, that's still a valuable thing. Uh, his thing is getting to the paint and drawing defense. If you have shooters who can who are out there with them who can space the floor, that's that's uh, that's valuable too. So, um, what we are talking about and what we'll continue to talk about is versatility in our lineup and. We envision adding, you know, versatile wings to the to the team. We we envision uh, at times Lowry sliding to the five now, Otto sliding to the four, having having guys that can. Uh, as Jim's mentioned many times, the, the multiple ball handler thing. If 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 we can be a team that rebounds from Lowry's position, from Otto's position, and uh, those guys have an ability to push it out, and we can get the ball up the floor quickly and, and advance it. That th those are things that. Uh, that, that's more to me what the league is about and, and how we can, uh, we can do that and do it better. So we're, we're looking for, as, as we go into this offseason, we're going to be looking for versatile guys um, because I think we have the type of, of lineup, uh, again, assuming we're, we're healthy, that we can, we can throw some, some difficult things out there for guys. But the, 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 the reality is we're still, you know, I, I can't lose sight of the fact that we're still young. We still, these guys have to grow internally. Um, 
a lot of it's on the individual to get better. It, it just is. I mean, we all, all of us who played knows that, you know, you had to improve in, in areas that you were, were weak at, and, and our guys have to do that. And what Jim's been doing today, it, it's as, it's as uh, efficient of a, a postseason exit interview I've seen. He's, he's laid it all out there for each guy. Exactly what he thinks they need to work on. It's been done in a very, uh, very positive way in terms of showing that he, he believes in them and wants them to, to get better. So um, we're, we're at a really good place with our head coach in terms of, of the direction we're headed. Uh, John, in, in that kind of same vein, you guys have been so enthusiastic about the work Jim's done. Do you foresee the organization making a long-term commitment to him before next season? It, it's very possible. It, it's very possible. In fact, uh, I, I've spoken to both Jerry and Michael about addressing that, and uh, I don't know what the timing will be, but I, I envision Jim being our coach here and, and, and us committing to him, yes. Hey, Pax. How you doing? Hi, George. Uh, how do you get over the perception that this is not a destination franchise and that it is not a well-run organization? You always have an opportunity to change that. Um, I, I, my feeling is is that the, the relationships that are really important are with the player and then subsequently with their agent. And if you have good relationships with the agent, then you're, you're going to be able to get people in your in your door in terms of recruiting them or, or whatever that may be so um, I, I personally cannot listen or pay attention to the outside noise and those things that are said some of it's true some of it's not and uh, I do think that when you when you establish yourself which we're trying to do right now as a, a relevant team again and as we get better uh, positioning ourselves to, to have money when uh, you know, when, when guys come up in the future, I, I think this will be a, a destination place. I do. But we have to get better. That, that's, that's the thing. We have to get to a point where we are playing for important things. And, but, again, our young guys have to develop into the type of players that other guys would want to play with. And I, I think we have a couple guys right now on the roster, and, and hopefully we'll have more in the future. Well, I mean, I, I can only believe that, you know, I'm sure there's – some people out there who believe it's not, you know, a, a great destination. Maybe it's a, you know, a, a media guy. I don't know who it is, but you know, th there's so much noise out there. We can't pay attention to that. All we can worry about is what we do in this building, and uh, and I, I like what we're doing right now. I, I think we're going to have a good summer. I think Jim's going to be, uh, you know, attentive to everything that that we're trying to do. I feel like we're in in you know in sync in that regard, uh, and, our, and our players understand. You know, it, it's. As, as we've had some discussion with them, the, the, the young guys especially feel a, an obligation to get better and to right this ship as an organization. Uh, and I, I think, honestly, that they, they see, many of them see Jim as a guy that, that is investing in them. You know, Jim's already talking about wherever they are this summer, going out and spending time with them, you know, spending a few days with each of them just to, to be there and, and uh, show them that, that they have value to us. So uh, in that regard, I'm, uh, I'm confident with a lot of things going on. What's the future of your assistant coaches and how open are you to maybe adding more experience on the bench given that you elevated Jim with experience to head coaching and then had uh, less experience there? We're, we're, we're going to have meetings on everything organizationally and there's nothing that won't be discussed or addressed. And that's really all I can say right now about that. I need to sit down with Jim and identify where he feels he needs help, and uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, it's that that is a, an area that all areas are going to be talked about. But that that's one a absolutely. We we obviously elevated a you know our associate coach to head coach, and now we have to determine. And then you know you change in midstream. You you know we work with what we had. I uh, love all the guys on our staff. They they work hard. They're they're really good people. Our players like them. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to look at what's best for the organization, what's best for Jim, and, and go about it that way. John, you talk about the, the passion and the care level that, that Jim has, and you cite that. W what makes you think that today's NBA player is more likely to respond to that kind of approach rather than resist it? I, I think what I've seen is his ability to show these guys that he, he genuinely cares about them. Um, that 
his, his goal is to get them better as individuals. And, you know, <laughs> I'm the first to admit that first week was, you know, like, it was like dynamite blowing up, you know? I mean, it was, it was a rocky week. But what I've seen since then is, is a guy that embraces this, this challenge. He, he embraces the individuals he's coaching. He really does view himself as a teacher. Uh, a guy that wants to connect with the, the players. And sometimes you have to be demanding and hard. And I, I still believe that y you can demand as a, as a head coach as long as you're showing these guys that you're doing it because you care about them and that you want them to succeed. Because all players want to succeed. And so I, I'm, I'm just confident. I can tell you this honestly. I've had in the four months that uh, – four and a half months that Jim's been the head coach, he and I have had – more dialogue together about everything than you know I had with any of the other guys, and you know probably combined. It's just it has been a, a rhythm to it, and he's receptive to a lot of things that uh, that we talk about. Doug Collins has been terrific for him; that they communicate all the time. Doug's wisdom and expertise uh, as a coach has been really valuable. So uh, I, I see some really good things, and. Uh, and again, it goes to back to what I see in this building every day and what I see on the road and how he's uh, approaching situations. Nobody's perfect. I mean, we all, you know, you're going to – I rub people the wrong way sometimes in, in this office. Uh, Jim's going to rub players the wrong way sometimes. Uh, Phil Jackson rubbed players the wrong way. They, the great ones do. Um, uh, we're just, you know, we're, we're going to try to build something here with him as our coach, and I'm, I'm confident in that right now. You talked just before a little bit about positioning the point guard you mentioned, and – there's this notion popularized in the NBA to, to position this league. Um, but there still seems to be a lot of really tall people uh, <laughs> in the league. And uh, Wendell, when, before he was hurt, uh, a lot of those games with Embiid, Drummond, Boban, it, you know, it was difficult. You, and obviously, Robin Lopez is a free agent. I, is Wendell a center uh, legitimately for what you're planning? And is that a position that you have to explore more? Well. Wendell is still a 19-year-old young man, and he's got the physical frame to add muscle and bulk to his frame, which ultimately will help him. And uh, I do think that he, he has the ability to defend that position better. But, look, he was overwhelmed at times, and rightfully so, but it was from a physical standpoint, not from a mental standpoint, uh, going against those big bodies. Uh, Andre Drummond wasn't – you know, he was big when he came in the league, but he's not, he wasn't as big as he is now. Um, so Wendell's going to grow. And, and again, with, with some of the young guys we've drafted over the last several years, you, you have to be a little bit patient in terms of that development physically. So, uh, but we're going to look at, again, we're, we're going to look at a lot of different things this offseason. And, and, but, but again, try to build a roster that, that Jim's comfortable coaching. I, I think sometimes, especially on the defensive end of the floor, if you have too many, you know, if, if you have too many schemes that you're trying because your personnel isn't uh, cohesive, then you, you end up not being, you know, really good at any anything that you can, or something you can hang your hat on every every game. So uh, we're, we're going to look at a lot of things. But I, Wendell's got a really bright future, and it, it's unfortunate that he got hurt because uh, the value that would have happened over the la you know the games he missed would have been would have been great for him. Tom, with the um, with the injuries. Um, how how much do you look at that as just the freak nature of the game versus maybe having to examine you know some of the training and, and nutrition methods? We have uh, well as I mentioned the four injuries we had and then you know you can even throw in the fact that uh, you know what happened with Lowry in in uh, Toronto the four the four there's I don't know what you can do about those you know you, you can't prepare for a, a fall and a broken thumb and, and things like that so I'm I'm not going to dwell on that we we have great confidence in our strength and conditioning staff. Chip Schaefer, uh, his credentials are as good as anyone. And the thing that, that I tried to impress upon the players last night is that we have everything here for them to, to work and improve this summer. You know, I mean, for players to, to endure an 82-game season, I, they have to get stronger. They have to become more powerful. Uh, they need to spend more time in the room over here behind us that where, where they – they use the resources we have. And I, I, I made that as clear as I could last night to the, to the players. I think our training methods are excellent if the players will buy into them. Um, I think Lowry last year, for example, uh, 
he had a great summer. He got stronger. And our doctors told us with the, the elbow injury that, you know, it's likely that had he not gotten that strength, he might have been out the entire year when he got hurt. So uh, I, I'm, I'm confident in our training methods. I, I would like to see our players in this building uh, adhering to that. I, I, I believe that, and I saw it over my entire career, you need a real uh, strength base in order to make it through an 82-game season. You, you do. And, and guys sometimes look to the outside of an organization. You know, pe other people get involved. They say, we got this guy who can work with you and do this and improve you. Um, we, we, we have a lot of resources, and we have a philosophy we believe in, but the players have to buy into it, and we try to educate them and, and get them to. And I, I, I do know that all our young guys are, are going to buy into it this, this offseason. That's important to us. John, I know you can't talk specifically about free agents, but uh, you will have roughly, I guess, $20 million in, in cap space. Generally speaking, you've talked about adding versatile players, but are you targeting positions, or is it just whatever veterans fit what you're trying to do? And I have <coughs> a follow-up at the end. Well, I think first thing we need to do is get is see what happens in our draft. You know, and a lot of that will be uh, – uh, I think that will determine a lot of what we do in free agency. Um, I think this year in, in the draft, we're going to have to keep a, a broad mind in terms of uh, how we want to go about things. Uh, Gar and I have talked about that a lot. So, um, but we'll we'll identify. I mean, we we want to. What would I do? What I will tell you, and I, I know for certain, is we, we need some physical and mental toughness from some vets to to help our guys out, and and that'll be a priority. Uh, uh. Do you have any response to a certain Chicago point guard camp talking about op being open to a return? <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to talk about free agents. Have, uh, uh, my last follow-up then is, uh, have you seen the Derrick Rose uh, movie that's been released? I have not seen it. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, I, I've not seen it. I was interviewed for it. And uh, Derrick, obviously, I mean, it, he's he's a Chicago kid. And we, ha you know, it, we had good times. There were some – rougher times but he's he's a great kid he's and you know chicago loves him we, we we have great respect for him hey john you mentioned the draft and you also mentioned luck those two things came into play when Derek, you know fell into your lap that year you're going to get a good player whether it's one through eight but it, if you do get either one or two it could be a generational kind of player do you even for a moment think about that if zion or number two falls into your lap what that would mean to this organization now, you know what, I, David, and honestly, God, you can't – I don't think that way. You, you just can't. Um, we'll find out on May 14th, uh, you know, luck and hope are not a strategy or a plan. We, we have to plan for what uh, the reality is on that day, and we will. And I, I'm confident. I, I, I think we, we've done a, a really good job in terms of drafting the last couple of years at seven. Um, there's always value. Uh, you're right, there's – there, there's – you know, can't talk about the kids, but we we all know what's out there, um, and whoever gets lucky is going to you know be better off. But um, we we we're, we're making progress in my mind. Uh, it didn't show up in wins and losses because the injuries hurt us. We had no continuity to our team. It was such a disjointed year because of that, um, and and the, the the group once we got Otto didn't get to play together that long. So I I, I think you know I, I think Otto is an understated addition for our our team. Uh, going into next year, I really do. Uh, his the, the sample size of 15 games that he played for us, he showed some versatility offensively that he, he really didn't display in, in Washington. Um, he, he was a better pick and roll player and passer than I, I anticipated. So uh, there, there, there's some, again, it, it's, it's a slow process, but uh, with health, I, I, I think we're, again, we're, we've got a solid foundation with where we're heading. Uh, John, of your 60 losses, 32 were at home. First of all, how much does that perturb you? And how can you assure your fans that you have the right plan in place and direction to not be in this same position next year? Well, yeah, the, 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 win, the, the home wins or home losses were bad. I, you know, you, you, you hope that your guys uh, take that seriously. Jim and I have talked about that. He's addressed that with the team, that that's, that's something that you uh, – you know, you can't accept. And if you're going to be a play, you know, battling for a playoff team, you have to win 25, 26 home games. You know, you just, you just do. So, um, but, but again, I, I think I've, I've talked about it. I, we did not have, again, we did not have a healthy team. And, and I, you know, 
know I sound like a broken record here, but the, the four major injuries we had were we couldn't do anything about. You, know, you, you just can't do it. So, um, but obviously we got some good news with, with Lowry through all the tests he had. Uh, that's a relief. You know, that's, that's something now that, uh, you know, he, he, he'll, he's being educated on things that he needs to do with his diet and all those things. So, uh, but yeah, I, if we can ever get this group together, healthy, I, I, I'm confident we're going to improve. We're going to add some, we're going to add two or three players to this, to this group this summer, and it should make us deeper. And uh, with that, and, and with Jim having a full training camp heading forward, I, I, to me, that's, that's a solid start. John, nobody has more passion for this organization than you, uh, but, but I'm just wondering, wondering if you're still enjoying, enjoying sitting, sitting in the seat and answering the questions and I almost, I almost feel like you're maybe more motivated now than maybe ever just to get it back to where you want it to be. Uh, there's no question. Um, and I, I can't understate this. You know, two years ago, we took on a challenge that we knew was going to be hard, but we we also knew or felt that we were getting a jump start on. Get, getting, you know, Lowry and Zach in that deal, Chris Dunn, getting Wendell, the, that pick out of that situation, um, the, the fact that it had we, you know, again, had we been healthy this year, we probably wouldn't be sitting here with a, you know, an opportunity like we're going to have in the lottery. So, yeah, I, I'm, we, we undertook something that was difficult, but we knew it going in. And I believe that we are on the right track. I, so much of it is leadership. And Jim has accepted that. He, he, he's, he said to this these group of guys that he's going to lead them. He, he's going to show them the right way. He's going to be truthful with them. He's going to coach them the way that he feels they need to be coached. And I'll find out a lot. I, I, th I think I already have found a lot about some of these guys and how they react to, to coaching. And there's, there's some, there's always, you know, chirping out there where, you know, people think a guy is a certain way, but, you know, people don't have the luxury that I have where you can sit in there and watch him do his work every day on the practice floor and, uh, and how he does support and encourage uh, all the while making sure that they are held to a, a, a standard. And that's, that's important. That, that's to me is basketball. That's coaching, teaching. John, not to be that guy and always ask this question, it seems like, but I know you guys believe in Gar Foreman, a general manager, but why, because of his scouting, why not put a guy in place that's a general manager that could be more front and center and let Gar be that player personnel scouting guy. And the second part of that question, Jerry Reinsdorf isn't the most patient guy from my history. Has he told you guys at any point within the last year that, hey, you know, I'm going to give you a chance to work through this rebuild, but this is it. This has to work, or I have to look to make a change. No, he, he's never said that, but but I think we're all smart enough to know the, the reality of this business. I mean, we, we convinced – Jerry and Michael that this was the right way to go at that time um, so but we all know the reality is and, and Jerry he, he, of course he gets frustrated with losing I mean I do too none, none of us you know want, want to lose as I mentioned er earlier we're in the, the business of winning um, so but there's been nothing said like that uh, as for Gar uh, I, I, I'll just keep reiterating that he's he's very good at what he does he's out in Portland right now at the Nike Hoop Summit scouting um, he and I work in tandem, uh, but I, I assume the leadership of this organization in my role, and that, that's how we're set up. So uh, our, our draft record, I think, is very good, and, uh, and I'm going to be the one that's you know, out front and center. That's, that's how we've set it up. Typically in the league, a team that wins 22 games, there's some finger-pointing. We're seeing it happen in L.A. right now. We didn't see any of that with this franchise this season, despite the struggles because of the injuries. You've talked about how Boylan's been impre uh, important to keeping it all together. Are you happy with the players themselves and the chemistry that they've developed in that locker room, the respect for each other that they have? Were you happy with what you saw this year? Yeah, for, for the most part, I was. We, we, uh, we got a good group of guys. I, I've said this often, and it, when, when you go through a rebuild, the veterans that you have on your team are vital. And, you know, Robin was really good for us. We, we traded Justin Holiday uh, earlier in the year, and Justin was a good voice for our guys. So when we lost him that, in that locker room, that, that was a, a veteran voice that, uh, 
that, that, that was helpful. And then when we started having all these injuries, it, it's hard for injured players to, to be leaders, you know, because you're not out on the floor. You're not going through the grind with the guys. But, but I, I'm, I'm confident with, with what happened in the locker room this year. I, I do believe, though, that we're at this point now where we're, we know we're going to add at least one young player to the roster through the draft. We, we have some money to spend. We are going to target veteran guys that are professional, can play the game, and will help our young guys along. That, that's, that's vital to us right now. And uh, I think as we do that, our young players will mature more. I, I was impressed this morning, you know, going through some of these, these exit meetings with our guys. Um, they, they were no nonsense. The, the, the players were engaged. They, uh, they accepted what Jim was asking of them. And, uh, and, and Jim has high expectations for them. I think it's the only way you can, can achieve. And, and I do know that co going into next, next season through the summer and training camp that Jim will be, he'll be consistent with his message to the players. Uh, and and I, I believe players respond to that. John, a, a two-parter for you. First, you mentioned you sat in on some of the meetings. Did you sit in on the meeting with Lowry Markinen? I did. And what was impressed upon him as to what he has to do between now and the start of next season to even get better? Because I would believe that he is the cornerstone of your rebuild. Well, th uh, several things. And, and again, you, you remember that Lowry's young. Um, the first thing for him is to, to continue to get stronger. He, he, he did last summer, came into camp bigger, uh, more lean mass than, he, than he'd had. And then when he hurt his elbow, then, you know, you go through a stretch of time, you can't lift anymore, and uh, so he, he lost some of that. So, so the, the, the strength thing for him is key. In terms of basketball, uh, Lowry ha has to, to become – first of all, he has, to, he has to learn how to play lower. Uh, his base has to become stronger. I think that will come with, with getting stronger, but his base has to become better so he can play lower and, and play against physicality. Uh, his ability to put the ball on the floor and create for himself has to improve. Uh, and, and I think he has to, to, to really focus on how to get himself open. You know, you don't have to be the quickest guy in the world to, to find ways to, to move your body and get yourself open. Larry Berg is a great example of that. I mean, he, you know, he, he wasn't quick, and I, I mentioned that to, to Lowry this morning, that uh, you know, the, if you play at one speed, you're easy to guard. If you can even just change speeds up a little bit to get yourself open, that's – and with his ability to shoot the basketball, uh, he, he has so much. That, that's, again, the encouraging thing is he's two years in. He's had a few little hiccups with injury. Uh, but the encouraging thing is he has so much room to grow, you know, so much room to grow. He averaged almost 19-9 to nine this year in a, a year that, you know, I think if, he, he, if you talk to him, he'd tell you, I, I, I could have done a lot better. So, uh, and he's a great kid. He fits everything we want to be. He wants to win. He cares. Um, so those are the type of guys that uh, we're trying to find. And I think this is probably going to be a one-word answer, yes or no. Is there anybody in the top two, three, outside of the top two, in the draft that is going to address a need the Chicago Bulls have right now with the positioning you guys have oh, in the draft? I, I, I think there's always, uh, yeah, I, I, th there'll, be, there'll be ways to address something we need, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, John? Uh, yes, Sam. You had... Um, talked about playoffs and things like that going forward. Um, every team that's made this kind of jump you're talking about, essentially doubling the win total, has added a transactional player, Steve Nash or Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett with Boston, those, those kind of jumps. So you're just saying that injury se season is an aberration and you don't have to add that kind of player, that you, you have the base there to do it to make what would be, would be a shocking sort of jump in the league. Which question, Sam? <laughs> Meaning, how do you go from 22 to 44 weeks? Well, you know, I, my, my, my heart tells me had we been healthy all year long, we would have won more than 22 games, okay? If we, and we, after the auto trade, we, we would have. Um, and I've not, you know, you're putting a number out there that I haven't mentioned. All I've said is I'd like a, to see us in, in a hunt for, for a, a playoff run. And I, I do know that we, we have to, to be healthy to do that. I've also talked a lot about the internal growth of our guys. I think Larry Markin has the opportunity to make a big step. I think Zach does. Wendell, Otto. Um, we're we're going to have we, – we, if we're injury-free, we're going to have a better bench than we had this year. So um, I understand what you're saying, that, uh, you know, going out and get that 
transactional player. Um, but there's other ways to, to build and to grow as a team. And um, I think we'll, we'll be okay in that regard. Supporting the Windy City Bulls today. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. Thank you.